Mary Watson, okay. followed by Nancy Erickson. Thank you. Mary Watson, 1817 Montague Street. Okay. This is concerning the Beach and Hudson Holdings proposal, as is evidenced on the audio of the last two meetings of the IPN committee. If any grants are envisioned, they should be denied, as this does nothing to benefit the public. This damages what we're already paying for in the beach project as recently completed the just last two years and denied us access to our park and beach. The beach should never be envisioned as an enterprise zone as this is laughable. Everyone knows this is the most valuable asset and property in our community, period. Oceanfront property is not another area of light to be developed. Number two, our sea turtles are in danger and the PAC Convention Center is along with a parking garage and the other things envisioned by Hudson Holdings, which Commissioner Amoroso on the tape says are, are, should be open from 8 to midnight daily, further threatens, threatens them, not to mention a three-story parking garage. Is this supposed to be without lighting at night until midnight? This radically changes the beach footprint and as such should show first be thoroughly studied by the EPA and Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission. Number three, to say the pool can never make money is short-sighted. Juan even states on these audio recordings that it has outperformed its expectations this year. It's very easy to prove the deficit since the business plan never included a pool of expenses, making it seem an added expense. This again is cheating us citizens as with proper management and marketing, this could be a prime driver to attract swim teams from across the country. I've already written to Glenn Jurgison of, of the Tourist Council about this and he was on Sunday's talk program on local issues. This was fraudulently presented as simply a tenant for the upstairs ballroom and reserving access for city meetings for the same. We were repeatedly told anything else was all rumor. However, these rumors are documented on the audio. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nancy Erickson, followed by Katie McGivern. I, I think I agreed to read her. She had a comment she wanted read into the record. So we'll read her comment. Okay. It's all right. Sure. Okay. Okay, it says the city of Lake Worth has a total lack of regard for the seniors along Lake Osborne Drive. The seniors who live in the large senior complexes like Murray Hills have no way to get around. And if they do not have a car, they deserve better. They pay taxes too, but are totally ignored. I've been told bus service along Lake Osborne Drive was stopped because enough people did not ride the bus. That is shameful. Even if we only, even if only a couple of old people a day rode the bus, it should be there for them. Many are stranded in their condos, unable to get to the grocery store or a drugstore for the basic necessities of life. From Murray Hills, it is a two and a half mile walk along Lake Osborne to reach the Lake Worth Road bus and or the Lake Worth Tri-Rail Station. It's also about an eight block walk from Murray Hills to reach the Sixth Avenue bus station. When I lost my car in 2012, after it broke down for good, I thought I could ride a bike to the grocery store. Well, that was wrong. I wound up in JFK after riding my bike to Publix on the Lake Worth Road and riding all the way there in the heat caused me to have a heart attack and need heart surgery. They went in and burned a piece of my heart in July 2012. I was in the hospital for 11 days, all because they could not get to public transportation. The city of Lake Worth can surely find the funds to look out for the welfare of its senior citizens. Even if it meant every person in Lake Worth would have a $2 tax added to their monthly city of Lake Worth utility bill, for senior welfare. After all, we pay a public service tax for water, a public utility tax for sewer service. We can surely see that our we can surely see that our seniors in need of help are not totally ignored. I've attached a proposal for a suggested bus route along Lake Osborne Drive, submitted by Nancy <coughs> Erickson. And so I have a copy for everybody here and one to enter into the record. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Katie Gibbard? Hi, uh, Katie McGivern, 2121 Collier Avenue. At the last city commission meeting, I learned that there was a new standard in public comment. When Mayor Pam Triolo allowed a private citizen, Mark Perilla, to get up and state very vile and even threatening comments about another <coughs> private citizen, the new standard for all of us and any future public comment is set. The past audio of the ITN commission makes it quite clear that the participants knew what they were doing would not be approved of by the citizens of Lake Worth. 
What was even more amazing was the fact that the participants, including a sitting commissioner, Andy Amoroso, made it very clear that they wanted a certain outcome in an upcoming election. The audio also made it quite clear that this ICM commission acted in anything but a professional manner. Snarky comments and multiple put-downs of the public at large were the order of the day. You even have a member of the bar stating quite clearly that there were ways around the will of the people. It seemed as though attorney Christy Godot thinks that previous electoral decisions by the city of Lake Worth are like so much bits of debris, something to be swept aside without another thought. Commissioners should be acting as the will of the people. They should not be acting to silence that very public. Commissioners, you should be making your decisions about what happens at the beach, not on what an unelected ITM commission suggests, but what the majority of your citizens want. And if the ITM meetings are going to be ongoing, how do you already have a workshop scheduled? More conversations out of the sunshine? Thank you. Up next, Lawrence McNamara left this. To read Attorney Godot's statement that we may be able to get around the 19-year, 364-day limit of the Charter Amendment is shocking. As an attorney, she is aware of legislative intent. Courts give great consideration to it where actions are proposed and taken that are opposed to that intent. 2004 Beach Protection Charter Amendment was not a citizen initiative, but was placed on the ballot by unanimous vote of the Commission to protect against private development at the beach and approved 9-1 by the voters. The intent of the Commission was very apparent and the support of the voters overwhelming. Attorney Goodell's <coughs> statement shows her transparent attempt to subvert the will of Lake Worth citizens in favor of city manager Michael, uh, Manager Bornstein, Mayor Triolo, Vice Mayor Maxwell, and Commissioner Amoroso's attempt to destroy our public beach park by allowing private development there. One of you three commission members need to give Commissioner McBoy and Commissioner Meyer to reject this plan and represent the will of the people. Thank you for your attention and consideration. Up next is Rick Riccardi, followed by Peter Tim. Good evening. Volume 24, 13th Avenue North. Just a few comments. Uh, last meeting, uh, Commissioner Mayor, you had interrupted the mayor because she thought she had interrupted Commissioner McBoy's conversation. Uh, I've known Commissioner McBoy for a number of years. I think he's capable of speaking for himself, and I just felt that you're a new member up there. You're trying to make a name for yourself. It looked like to me you were just kind of. Uh, Snitten and trying to uh, show some disrespect you, to the mayor. You have to direct it towards me, thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know that they just the so, rules so are. Anyway, um, I, I think disrespect that goes on back and forth sometimes is really ridiculous. We should all kind of work together on the, the amount of people that up and spoke on behalf of Commissioner uh, City Manager Bornstein. Uh, I was very edified by that. I was also edified by the uh, plea of Commissioner Maxwell to kind of vote. Uh, unanimously for his pay raise. Your comments about the raises for the city employees is absolutely necessary and well taken and we should be doing something about that. But for the sake of unity, you could have made those same statements regarding the uh, raises for the employees and for the sake of unity, uh, stood behind our city commissioner. You failed to do that when so many people got and spoke so, so wonderfully in his name. You guys knocked yourself down a couple of notches in my book. Peter Tim? Followed by Barbara Albo. <coughs> Peter Tim, North Low Street. And yes, the sandwich board I'm reading has a thousand questions on it. And they will be asked one by one and, and given you a chance to answer them one by one. And I think uh, the answers will be very enlightening. Uh, what I'm up here for tonight for is to welcome Commissioner Meyer to the city and wish you well. And also to tell you that uh, at the last meeting, when you mentioned that the uh, water proposition also included the uh, beach uh, rentals, and uh, if your question was asked by, answered by uh, uh, 
with the waters that, uh, oh, that's not for now, that's for later on. Well, your answer to your question should have been, well, then why is it in with this thing tonight? It does not belong. However, I have a feeling that this uh, put off for a future date might be until the 28th when they try to once again take over our beach and use that for commercial purposes. I hope that it's not true, but I have a feeling with all the propaganda out there that it might be because they are trying very hard to make money on their hotel. And the way to do that is, of course, to get more people to come to their place and where they don't really care about the people of Lake Worth. They care about the money they can make here. And that is their main drive. So please stick with it. I know it's going to be tough, but you've got to stay with something if you believe in it. I believe in Lake Worth. And I have tried my best to do things good for Lake Worth. Thank you, sir. Who be going to all of the yards in my vote no one? Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, that was it. Okay. Thank Including you, going to the uh, code enforcement. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Barbara Alvo, followed by Peggy Fisher. Like you know how to Peter. Yeah, like you know. <laughs> <laughs> New design. Uh, Barbara Alvo, 422 South J Street. Um, I've come to say thank you to Steve O'Neill and the Trash Department on a completely different topic and a positive note. We had a large uh, neighbor with a large property put out a giant pile of trucks last Sunday. It was 50 feet wide, 8 feet high, and 6 feet deep from the curb. And they came that day and um, were able to pick it up and get it out of there and hopefully find the heck out of the bank that currently owns the property who now actually has their name on the window on a piece of paper uh, to contact those people because we want to get them, uh, other than the chicken, they didn't take the chicken. Uh, but the trash is gone. <laughs> Everything else is good. So I appreciate that. We also had a large gas leak in our neighborhood last night and PBSO um, uh, employee at Checkers hit the gas line and knocked open the gas line and then when they turned off the gas line something else <coughs> went woogie and they evacuated Fifth Avenue from on J Street from 5th to 6th. They brought everybody down into the 400 blocks. All those citizens were out for an hour and a half or so while they corrected the gas. When we were getting new gas lines through. On that note, the gas lines. I complained to the new people putting our gas lines in when they cut up my sidewalk, and we're going to leave it as a sand pit for the two weeks until the sidewalk is replaced. And I mentioned that that was a problem. I might make a phone call. So I got a temporary asphalt patch, but I'm the only person they patched. So we have school children going to south grade that are walking in the street to not walk through the sand pits. So if they could please come back and fix the rest of those holes that they left so the school children are safer, that would be the bomb. Thank you. Thank you. Peggy Fisher. Peggy Fisher, North A Street. Um, I'd like to thank our lifeguards who, if you've been reading the paper this last weekend, again saved two individuals at our beach. One right at the end of your shift, and I believe one after hours. Um, our lifeguards are doing a commendable job on our beach, and we need to thank them immensely for that. Um, as far as the ITN, we've had more discussions on this process than we had when we went through looking at a new power supply provider. And that was a very closed situation with very little information provided to the public, absolutely no information provided to the public, and actually no information provided to the Electric Utility Advisory Board. Um, and no one screamed and hollered, and that's a very valuable asset of this city too. And I can hear the comments back here, which is fine because it doesn't bother me, but I think it's disrespectful. And I'd like to see, Madam Mayor, you put that gavel down a couple of times and keep the order in the, in the room. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Okay. 